In this video, we'll be talking about another kind of regression called the lasso regression. Now, the reason for this kind of regression is the same reason as the ridge regression. You can get the ridge regression video right here. Uh, this is going to be very similar to the ridge regression video, so we'll skip a few steps that we did in that video, and I'll just explain the results and the analogs between them. So the problem with just using an OLS regression, ordinarily squares, well, when we have many variables, is that sometimes certain variables are highly correlated. And when that happens, the variance on the OLS betas uh, get really, really high, and they vary from sample to sample. And sometimes we get really, really big betas that we don't want, that aren't accurate. So to kind of curtail that, to kind of fix that problem, we used ridge regression, uh, which put a constraint on how big the betas can get. Again, we're going to do the same kind of thing, except instead of using the L2 norm, we're going to use the L1 norm. And to get a differences between the two norms, you can watch the really brief video right here on the different kinds of norms, basically the difference between an L1 norm and an L2 norm. So if you remember the ridge problem became the well the OLS problem was trying to minimize the sum of the squares residuals. The ridge problem was that we're trying to minimize the sum of the square residuals plus this user defined lambda uh, times the L2 norm squared of the betas. Now the lasso problem ends up being very similar. It looks the exact same as ridge except instead of having the lambda L2 norm squared, we're going to have lambda L1 norm and this is not squared. This is just L1 norm. So just a refresher if you didn't go back and watch the uh, norms video is that the L1 norm of some beta, so in this case we have beta vector is equal to beta naught, beta 1, and again you should not be using uh, ridge or lasso if you just have two factors, you should be using only have three or more regression coefficients, but again we're doing this for simplicity. The L1 norm of the beta vector is simply absolute value beta naught plus absolute value beta 1, and as you add more beta coefficients here, you can just keep adding the absolute values of them to get the L1 norm. Okay, so that, that's what the L1 norm is. And this is, again, a user-defined parameter. So there are a few key, key differences. There's one key difference, which I think is very cool, between the lasso regression and ridge regression, which are both trying to uh, solve the same problem, which is that it's trying to put a cap on these betas to try to get them to, to uh, fix this big variation that we might have in the OLS uh, betas. The difference here is the shape. So if you remember in the ridge video, the shape of the constraint ended up being a circle. That is, we had this, this green function, which is essentially kind of representing what this function maybe could look like. It's just a very general function. We're trying to minimize that function. These are the level curves of it. Uh, and our constraint was a circle. But in this case, our constraint is a diamond. Because when you graph the absolute value, as we did in the, uh, the norms video, it ended up being a diamond. How, that's, that's how the constraint looked. And to make that concrete, what you're actually trying to do in a ridge regression, where this comes from, the, the thing in this black box, sorry, what you're actually trying to do in a lasso regression, uh, the thing in this black box here, is that you're trying to minimize the sum of the square residuals, which is the exact thing that's in the OLS, this and this matchup exactly the same, except you're putting a constraint, you're doing it such that the L1 norm of the betas is no more than some real number C. And what does that look like graphically? Well, if this is C, well, this where this corner is, if this is C, this is minus C, this is minus C, then if you want this uh, L1 norm of the betas, in this case, we're just doing beta naught, beta 1, to be less than or equal to C, that means it can be anything on the periphery of this diamond or inside this diamond shaded in brown here. Okay, so we're trying to make the uh, errors a minimum such that the betas that we choose are also within this diamond or on the outside. So now if we look at these level curves, and we label those the same way that in the ridge regression, so the innermost one is 5, and then 10, and 15, and then 20, and then 25, an interesting thing happens. Well, if this diamond were just a circle, then we, we're not really sure where the minimum beta not beta 1 points would be. But when it's a diamond, it gets these sharp edges, these, like, co these corners right here, there's these four corners. And it, it becomes very likely that a function, uh, such as this level curve, is coming in, it will hit at this diamond, and that will be the minimum point where it hits. For example, if we had drawn another level curve, the next one, which would have been the value for 30, so this level curve would have been 30, we would not choose that one because we're trying, to, we're trying to minimize this function, and 25 is better than 30, and we have a point on the 25 that hits on the outside of this diamond, so this is already okay. So these jutting out, these, these pieces that are just jutting out, they tend to get hit a lot more by these kind of functions, these functions we're trying to minimize than other points on the diamond. For example, a point right here or just here or randomly anywhere else on the, uh, the, the line segments between two corners. So because of that, we get a very interesting thing. For example, this, this certain green curve decided to hit it on this. So what is this? This is beta naught is equal to, let me write in uh, pen. This is beta naught is equal to C and beta 1 
is equal to zero. So we get the zero, and this is just in two dimension. It becomes a little bit more difficult to visualize in three and further dimensions, but the an the analog remains the same, which is that it's going to tend to hit corners a lot more. It's going to hit these certain corners a lot more. And on these corners, something or another is zero. One of these coefficients or many of these coefficients turn out to be zero. And this is very, very, very handy for us, because whereas in the ridge case or the OLS case, we didn't really ever get a zero coefficient. We got things that are really close to zero. Uh, sometimes we got things that are bigger than other things. It, being, it became kind of difficult to tell uh, which ones we should just ignore and which ones we should keep. This system tells us exactly, explicitly, which ones to ignore and which ones to keep. If something has a zero, we will just ignore uh, whatever variable is attached to that coefficient. Uh, but if something does ha has a non-zero, then maybe we won't ignore it. So what it does is it sparsifies our, uh, our, our beta vector. And basically what that means is if we have our beta vector, and now I'm going to label it with the uh, script L for lasso. So if we have our beta lasso vector, and all then we get are, let's say we get some intercept value beta naught, and then we get a zero for beta one, and then we get a zero for beta two, we get a beta three, and so on. And we have a bunch of zeros that are just sitting in here until beta n, let's say. So because we have all these zeros, we know which ones have a real pull, which ones have a real uh, impact on the the variable we're trying to explain, the, the result vector. In this case, it's y. So we choose only those. This is something called feature selection. We're choosing, we're letting the model choose which features we're going to include, and we're just ignoring the ones that become zeros. And this is kind of the geometry behind it. Okay, so that's basically what's going on. Uh, so basically, the analog is that we're trying to minimize the sum of the square residuals, except subject to this L1 constraint, which is a diamond, which causes many zeros, which causes us to be allowed to pick out the features we most want. And if we go through the same Lagrange steps we went through in the Ridge video, uh, it's, it's not that hard. We go through the same Lagrange steps. Then what we're trying to really do is minimize this, this sum, which is common to all three of these models. Uh, but this time we're trying to do with that sum plus the lambda, user-defined lambda, times the L1 norm of the betas. So the last thing, the last loose center tie-up is that, remember in the uh, the Ridge video, we found an explicit formula for the beta vector. We, we found an explicit formula involving the transpose of the A matrix, some uh, inverting something and stuff like that. We cannot find an explicit formula for the lasso. What that really means is that this is best done through a uh, computer, best, best using a computer package to figure out what your best betas are. But once you figure them out, it's very handy that many of the coefficients end up being zero, so you can pick out the best features. That's really what the, the profit of using a lasso regression is. So next time we'll talk about a new type of regression.